Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rahim. So, as ka jo mara topic hai, that is plate theory of chromatography. So, this is one of the important topics as far as the chromatography is concerned. Okay. So, to begin with this plate theory, let's again go to the chromatography. So, uske liye bola tha. So, just think of a column, and then obviously we have a stationary phase there. Fine. So we have a stationary phase there in the column. So it's packed with some stationary phase material. And then, so this is a column stationary phase material. Now, and then we have a mobile phase over it. So that mobile phase actually is flowing through this column downwards. And then we have also sample injected inside, sample. So that the, that the solvent is flowing, the mobile phase is flowing across it, and sample is also getting meanwhile well separated. Now, the question is that, let us now see that in the sample there are two analytes. So initially we received one analyte, and after some time we received a second analyte. So we received a second analyte. So that we can actually see through the chromato <coughs> gram that we have the signal response, let us see its conductivity versus retention time. So we get a response like we have two peaks, or two peaks, fine. So this is the peak which comes earlier, that's one, because this time period is less, it comes less, this retention time is less, and this is the peak number two. So it's coming up to some time, fine. Now, the question is that how much our column is efficient? How much it's, it's capable of making the separation efficient? Is my kitna potential is column mein? Ya hamari is process mein kitna potential hai ki dono in a light sample mein they'll be efficiently separated with 100% efficiency. It may do fraction yase ara jom yas elevate collect karte elevate the jom yase solvent collect karte us may jo mara molecules rate ya chemical species kya 100 percent separate ho jate ya or may koi aisa mixture rata jis may jo have we have the uh, impurities present have we have the the separation is not there to is column ki is uh, separation ki efficiency ko to have explained chemically we have basically this plate theory. So we have a concept that called as the column efficiency. How much efficient is our chromatographic system? How much efficient it is to separate the two components or how many number of components with uh, you know as much as efficiency? So the step of the so efficiency to understand karne ke liye, there was a theory called as the plate theory. So plate theory is basically ye koi plate, a plate yahan pe naam hai. So as per this theory, this column is composed of many plates of infinite length. So this is many plates of our disk as you can see. So as per plate theory, your column is composed of n number of, n number of these are imaginary plates, remember this they exist in you, they imagine kar lete imaginary plates or discs or some sort of discs throughout this column, uske fractions, uske jo hai aap cross sections cut karte jai so you have n number, let us see the total number is n aap column to fix hota hai so the length of the column is fixed so let's have n number of imaginary plates as per plate theory. Assume that the column is composed of many plates. Let's say the number is n. Our discus. Fine. n number of plates. Now let us say that the 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 the, uh, the length of each plate, the smaller plate, so we have very less finite length. So the length of plate. The length of each plate or disc 
each plate. So that is given the name HETP. Fine? So the length of each plate, that's basically given the name HETP. So for me, as the column length is fixed, so you can say N multiplied by this HETP, HETP. So that's the total length of the column. So the total length of the column. And as the length of column is fixed, so the number of vertical plates is the total length divided by this HETP, that's the length of each plate. Or we can see HETP that can be defined as L by N. That is the length of the column divided by N. Now if N is more, so if N is more, that means this this is less. So if that means this HETP is inversely related to the because our length of the column is fixed, the number of vertical plates. As per plate theory, we assume that the column is composed of many vertical imaginary plates. Okay. What they see here is a fluid. Yeah, the mobile phase has to be out. In each and every plate, there is an existence of equilibrium. A chemical species equilibrium बना लेता है between mobile and stationary phase. हर plate में, जैसे let's say in here, here, that moves here, the equilibrium moves to this, then equilibrium moves to this plate, then to this place. So actually, when the mobile phase and the chemical species pass through each plate, so at each and every plate we have the equilibrium existing between the, the, the chemical species have to be in equilibrium between the mobile and stationary phase. So this is actually the assumption. So in the plate theory, basically, so in the plate theory it assumes that that the columns composed of n number of vertical plates, and then we have existence of equilibrium each and every plate. Equilibrium. Chemical species you have. As it gets, we know that chemical species, apne aap ko solvent or or ye jo hai mobile phase or stationary phase ke beech mein it gets distributed. So it 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 it's assumed that in every plate we have an equilibrium existing between the stationary and mobile phase. Fine. And then, so this way, if you have more equilibrium existing, that means there will be better efficiency. You can so as per plate theory, if the number of vertical plates is more. There are more equilibrium, so the number of equilibriums, number of equilibriums existing in the column, that is directly proportional to the length of the column. I think the length is directly proportional to the height of each vertical plate. So the number of equilibriums existing, that is directly proportional to the the number of vertical plates, that is the n. ठीक, so अगर vertical plates आपके ज़्यादा है, that means your, so अगर आप थोर number of vertical plates is more, that means the height or length of each plate is less. So if height is less, that means column efficiency is more. So for a process to be efficient, for a separation to be efficient, for a chromatographic separation to be efficient. So your n should be more than there should be more number of plates. Or your length of the vertical plate, which is designated by H E T P, that should be less. So that's what is called as height equivalent vertical plate. It's basically the the height of that imaginary small plate, small disc height equivalent equivalent vertical plate. Height equivalent vertical plate. So as per plate theory, the column efficiency depends on how many vertical plates are. So if you have more plates and the length of plate is less, you have more plates because length of column, as we know, is fixed. So more equilibrium will exist between solute and salt. This is the 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 equilibrium of solute between the two phases, stationary and uh, the. A mobile phase will be more, so your column will be more efficient. That means you get better separation of chemical species. 
Now this is point number one. Now, second thing in the plate theory as far as the column matrix is concerned. Now, what happens sometimes in the chromatogram we have Let us say this was our, this is, uh, uh, we carried this chromatic rate separation at some time and in the second this was D number 1 and D number 2 we tried to separate the similar species and then we have similar experimental conditions almost so, but we are getting something like this now if you look at this peak and this peak, look at this peak and this peak. But this peak has its width is very much. So this peak is said to be the broad peak. We say it's a broad peak. So this broadening of the peak means that the column has become it has become less efficient. What, is, what does that mean? That means the there's a the 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 chemical species which was directly getting, you know, eluded out from the column, now it is just, uh, it's a scattered throughout. This means that it has been in this column. Now it is a little bit out of the way, then it is a little bit out of the way, then it is So it is taking this much time to elude all. So that is why it is not broadening. So broadening, when you have peaks broadening, that is the efficiency is not there. So as far as the broadening of the peak is concerned, uh, so if our if our the if our uh, signals are broad, if our signals in the chromatogram are broad, that means column is less efficient. And if our signals are narrow, that means our column is efficient for separation. So if our signals are broad, the column is Less if should if the signals are narrow, if the signals are narrow only, sharp, that means the column is efficient. Fine. The efficiency of column is defined as by the number of vertical plates. If the number of vertical plates are more, that means the length of each plate is less, HTP is less, so column is highly efficient. Fine. And uh, about the important thing is, now you count the number of vertical plates number of vertical plates so the count of vertical plates count yeah vertical plate count vertical plate count this is not fixed yeah there because hum ye zoom karte is an image there are imaginary plates existing sometimes agar flow hum vary karenge do experiments mein flow of the solvent so if you vary the flow of the mobile phase flow rate so the number of vertical plates will vary number one so the number of vertical plates is the number is not fixed the count is not fixed rather it depends on the flow rate so the likely it depends on the nature of the solute you have to time pe different types of solutes ko separate karna hai you have type pe different types of separates ko use the, the solutes ko use kiya ya analyte ko so it depends on the nature of chemical species to be analyzed nature of chemical species to be analyzed chemical species to be analyzed. Us pe depend karta hai hamara vertical plate count, number of vertical plate depends on the flow rate of the mobile phase. Fine. So it is not uh, that ki aapne ek type of columns ki length fix hai. Always the number of vertical plates will be seen. So it depends on what is the flow rate of the mobile phase or the solvent which actually flashes through or it depends on the nature of the chemical species which are actually separating. So theoretical plates basically depends on these factors. So in general I should say as per plate theory that in a chromatographic column we have n number of imaginary hypothetical plates existing and as the chemical species passes through each and every plate in each and every plate it, there's an existing equilibrium between the two phases mobile and stationary phase so that equilibrium comes Fourth, fourth, and in this way it is in a position to separate the chemical species. If you have more equilibrium existing, that means the number of vertical plates more, the column is more efficient. Inter means the height of the column, if it is less, the column is more efficient. 
and that height is called HETP, that's called as height equivalent theoretical grade. So if that height is less, that means column is more efficient, that means the broadening is less. So the signals are broad, that means less efficient. So it means basically that the height of column is more. Fine? So for column to be efficient, height should be less, HETP should be less, or the number of theoretical plates should be more. So and then it depends on that the, the, the count of the plates that depends on the flow rate, it depends on the nature of chemical species. So that count is not fixed for a column, so it varies. So this was in general the basics of the plate theory uh, as far as the column efficiency or as far as the separation of chemical species from a given column is concerned. So this is all for the day as far as the plate theory is concerned. Tomorrow we will discuss in the second lecture sort of more points related to the plate theory. So that we will discuss some the, the equation called as the plot called as a limited plot. So there will be some more concepts related to the plate theory.